Chinese American scientists are trying to put their lives back together after being arrested in the United States on suspicion of spying for China. Charges against both were later dropped with little explanation. We'll talk more about their story later in the show, but we begin with the case of Chinese American police officer Peter Liu. New York City policeman was recently found guilty of manslaughter in the 2014 shooting to death of an unarmed black man. Thousands of Chinese Americans took to the streets in cities across America last weekend to protest Liang's conviction. CCTV correspondent Lili Tang has this report from New York. What do you want? When do you want it? This weekend, across more than 30 U.S. cities, Tens of thousands of Asian Americans, mostly ethnic Chinese, poured into public squares and plazas from New York City to Los Angeles to rally around former police officer Peter Liang. We're here to let people know that the death of a Kai girl is a tragedy, but this tragedy has been compounded by the injustice to Peter Liang. A New York jury this month convicted 28-year-old Peter Liang of second-degree manslaughter after his gun went off in the stairwell of this Brooklyn housing project in 2014, killing 28-year-old Akai Gurley. The deadly shooting came in the months following the much-publicized deaths of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, and Eric Garner in Staten Island, killed by white police officers who never faced trial prompting nationwide Black Lives Matter protests. Hands up, don't shoot! Hands up, don't shoot! Hey, don't Amid public pressure, Liang the first New York police officer to be convicted in a line of duty shooting in over a decade, drawing outrage that this was an accident and that he's being used as a scapegoat because he's Asian. Asian Americans suffer from a couple of different stereotypes. Perpetual foreigner syndrome basically says that, you know, we're Asian Americans, we're not real Americans, we're foreigners, potential spies for other country, other countries, and, and so we shouldn't be treated the same way. We don't necessarily deserve equal justice under the system. In New York's Chinatown, residents were quick to voice their frustration. I think the so-called mainstream society discriminates against minorities. This verdict is unfair. I think he's being scapegoated. No fair. I don't know what, what's happened with the court, okay? It's an injustice. It's definitely an injustice. Justice! Supporters hope their voices will be loud enough to make a difference ahead of Peter Liang's sentencing on April 14th. He faces up to 15 years in prison. While there has been widespread support for Peter Young, this controversy has also divided the Asian American community, with some pan-Asian organizations standing by the conviction, saying it's time police officers are held accountable regardless of race or color. Still, many other Chinese Americans maintain that Young's conviction only covers up previous injustices with another injustice. Li Lintan, CCTV, New York. Joining me now from New York is Peter Liang's attorney, Ray Downs Koshet. She is also a former prosecutor in Manhattan and a former deputy commissioner with the New York Police Department. Also with us from Los Angeles is Frank H. Wu. He is a professor at the University of California Hastings College of Law. His opinion pieces have appeared in major U.S. newspapers. Welcome both to the show. Ray Downs Koshet, I want to start with you. Um, this case has been described as a tragedy, both for the death of the unarmed black man, but also but Peter Liang as well. Can you just talk us through how tragic this case is? Well, this was an accident that turned into a, a criminal indictment for a very serious felony. And we went to trial and presented what we thought was very convincing evidence that this was an accident, and only an accident, and the jury um, convicted and we are going to, to appeal this very, very aggressively because we, we sincerely believe, and I think there's a, a lot of opinion that's going with us, that the, that the uh, conviction did not fit the elements of the, either of the crimes of which she was convicted. Uh, how, how is Peter Young feeling and his family after this conviction? You could see the shock in the courtroom as the oh. verdict was read out. I saw your hand on his back there too. Uh, he is absolutely devastated and he is terrified. 
understandably. He's 28 years old. He is a, a, a very a gentle, intelligent, principled young man, and he has felt absolutely uh, horrible about this. Frank, I want to bring you in from Los Angeles. Obviously a tragic case. We saw the demonstrations over the weekend in the Asian American, Chinese American community. What's the feeling here? And obviously this case can't just be taken in a vacuum. Consider the amount of police officer violence that's been reported in the US media and globally in the last 12 to 18 months. That's right. Uh, this issue has been around for a long time. Uh, those of us old enough remember the video of the Rodney King beating uh, here in Los Angeles. And uh, many people would have said until about a year, year and a half ago, well, that was the past. Except now there have been so many incidents and with everyone having a smartphone and cameras uh, at all times, we have video. We can watch it and we can see and in case after case, whether it's in New York City or Baltimore or elsewhere, there's a pattern, and it's disturbing, where African-American men, unarmed, uh, are beaten, uh, shot, killed by law enforcement. This is a societal problem. It's complicated, it's controversial, but it's led to this groundswell of public anger. Uh, entirely understandable. So, do you the Black Lives Matter movement and so on. Frank, do you believe that Peter Liang was somehow swept up in all this? Yes. So, what's happened is there's all this background. And when you look at the number of prosecutions, there haven't been many. And there are almost no Asian American uh, cops. There are a few. And it's great to see that. So, it's just very strange. And that's what Chinese Americans have pointed out. Nobody condones a shooting by a cop of someone unarmed, regardless of the identity of the officer or the victim. And it's important to say that, to say that loudly and clearly, and I would say that. And I am saying that. But what many Chinese Americans have asked is, wait a minute, there were dozens of other cases that either weren't prosecuted uh, or were resolved very differently. Uh, there was a plea bargain or something along those lines. And the first big, spectacular case that comes out of New York involving a uh, shooting in this recent time period, it involves someone who's Asian American, where much of the evidence suggests it wasn't one of those terrible, egregious cases. It's a tragedy. Mm -hmm but not intentional. Uh, Ray Downs, Coach, I want to uh, go back to you. Uh, prosecutors in the case said Pi Liang fired his gun when uh, the victim wasn't, didn't, wasn't armed, uh, so therefore that is uh, a prosecutable case, perhaps more than uh, Eric Garner who died uh, in a, after a, a, a chokehold because he wasn't actually responsible, uh, Peter Liang, the police officer, for his firearm. What's your view on that? This is not a, a, a case of police brutality at all. His gun misfired by accident. It ricocheted off a wall. And what happened here is that after all the evidence was in, the prosecutor appeared to change his theory of the case completely and summed up on a different theory of the case, telling the jury that Peter had, had fired at this man, that he had he certainly expressly or impliedly said that Peter had intentionally fired his weapon and fired it at a Kai Girling. That is just not true and it's not supported by the evidence. And the area that he was patrolling uh, was a notoriously difficult area for policemen, correct? Without a doubt. Uh, Without a doubt. Describe that for us. Um, Public uh, housing in New York City uh, is extremely difficult to patrol, particularly the, the stairways and the roof landings of these places are dangerous. There are many, many law-abiding people who live in these places, but from what we were able to, to um, divine during this trial, many of them go home at night and lock their doors because it's at night when uh, criminals take over.
and there are a lot of gangs in these projects, and uh, it's a very, very uh, dangerous environment. So these vertical patrols, as the NYPD calls them, mm. up and down are the stairs, yes, up and down the stairs, up to the roof landing, are very perilous for police officers. And in fact, it was uh, testified to during the trial that uh, that officers are told that it is okay to have your weapon out when you are going up to those roofs. Uh, I just want to bring in, in Frank again. Um, do you think, I mean, Liang obviously shouldn't be given a pass because uh, obviously of his ethnic identity, but do you think he was singled out here? Do you think there is a scapegoat here going on? It, it certainly looks that way when you look at the pattern. But in legal terms, very hard to prove. Mm. Uh, the legal term would be selective prosecution. Uh, that is almost impossible. Ironically, the leading Supreme Court case on the subject, when laws are applied unevenly, is a case from 150 years ago called Yik Wo versus Hopkins. It's out of San Francisco. It involves Chinese laundrymen who were having a law about laundries enforced against them uh, while their white rivals didn't. So there is precedent. But so it's you're, you're, you're pointing to a pattern here that goes back through American history. You're saying that, you know, we talked a lot about the Black Lives Matter uh, argument, but you're saying that this happens against Asian Americans as well? That's right. So for many Chinese Americans, even those who are newcomers, what they see is a pattern where people of Asian or Chinese descent face a legal system that's hostile and that singles them out. So there isn't clear proof here, but so many have raised this question. Why was this case prosecuted so vigorously when others weren't? Can I, can I, I, can I also bring in uh, you again, Ray? Selective sure. prosecution, do you believe that? I agree with the, with the professor. It's, a, it's almost impossible to prove. Uh, if I could get into the mind of a prosecutor or a jury and, and understand exactly what their motives are, um, I'd be rich. Would, would you I've never been able to do it. I've been doing this for almost 40 years, and I, I couldn't do that. But I think, I think that the professor is absolutely right. Legally, um, it's almost impossible to prove. I'm not a lawyer, you are. Would you make it part of your appeal? Uh, I doubt that. Why? We're not considering that right now. Because we don't have the, uh, the evidence to back it up. But there is this deep-seated deep feeling uh, within the community. Is that going to help, do you think, in terms of keeping this case in the limelight as we go through the appeals process? I'd like to think so. And it was certainly heartening to see the thousands and thousands of people who came out to uh, Cadman Plaza in Brooklyn on Saturday. And there were also demonstrations in, in other cities. Um, Chinese people are very, very offended by this. And can I ask you one more question? Uh, sure. When you see, obviously, uh, the death that we've seen in the hands of police uh, in Ferguson, on the streets of, of New York, and then Peter Yang, your client, is mentioned in the same sentence, the same paragraph as that. How does that make you feel as his defender? Uh, it's terribly unfair, and it's just wrong. But I think that this this courtroom was, was filled with elephants, and they were the, the elephants of, of Ferguson, Missouri, of Cincinnati, of Staten Island. And here's a here's a something that is a sheer accident. Frank, and I just, it's being treated as though it's police brutality or corruption, which it most certainly is not. Frank, I want to finish with you. Obviously, Peter Liang's uh, thoughts very much with the Asian American, Chinese American community. He's not exactly the poster boy of police violence, is he? I mean, uh, when you when you've seen the other incidences, there have been confrontations. This as Ray said, was a shot that was fired in darkness that ricocheted. Um, this is a difficult case for everyone, isn't it? That's right. Race is complex. It sometimes brings out the worst uh, in us, all these mutual suspicions. And that's what this case confirms. Uh, race is the 
American tragedy. There's a big difference between what we believe and what we can prove in a court of law. The challenge for the lawyers will be to undo this verdict. It's a tough, tough challenge. Frank Wu in Los Angeles, thank you very much. Ray Downs Koshetz in New York, thank you very much for joining us. A tragic case, we'll take a short break. Two Chinese-American scientists next arrested for espionage, but the charges are dropped. Why were they targeted? Did race and politics play a part? Please stay with us. You're watching The Heat. CCTV-America.com for live streaming and up-to-the-hour reporting, as well as news and some regular updates to our various programs. While you're there, check out some of our web exclusives like One More Question and Chinese Culture. You can link to our Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Weibo platforms. So log on now and follow us at CCTV-America.com. turn now to the case of two Chinese-American scientists accused of espionage. Last year, United States federal agents arrested Xi Xiaosheng, the chairman of Temple University's physics department. He was accused of sharing sensitive information with China, but months after his arrest, the charges were dropped. A similar case paid out in Ohio starting in October 2014. Another Chinese-American scientist, Sherry Chen, was arrested by the FBI and also accused of spying for China. The charges against her were dropped shortly before her trial was due to begin last year. Ms. Chen talked with CCTV recently and described the trauma of being taken into custody. I didn't know what uh, was going on, what was uh, happening. I stand there and froze on the spot. I requested the, the indictment written the second time, but they did. I still didn't know what they are talking about. Then they said that they are going to take me to uh, the Indian Federal Court for here. We passed through my co-workers walked to an FBI car in front of the building. Before the getting in the back seat of the car, one of the FBI put my hand across from the back to the front. Then I saw all my co-workers are looking through the windows and watch me taken away. Joining me now here in the studio to discuss these cases is Sherry Chen's attorney, Peter Zeidenberg. He also represented Dr. Xi. And still with us from Los Angeles is Frank Wu. He is a law professor at the University of California, Hastings College of the Law. Thanks so much, Peter. We've talked many times. This case has been uh, in the headlines for a long time. Uh, professor Xi thankfully has his job back. Uh, Sherry Chen, not. What happened here? The cases are very similar. Uh, was the FBI just looking for people because of the fear of Chinese espionage? Well, I think uh, the fact that there is so much uh, concern, I'm tempted to say the word paranoia, but I don't want to suggest that uh, there aren't realistic and justified concerns about uh, spying from China, hacking from China, uh, economic espionage from China, but those understandable and justified concerns have lent themselves to an overreaction, at least as far as I can see, certainly in these two cases where um, dots that should not have been connected were connected, and square pegs were, were forced into round holes, and despite the fact that nothing added up, nothing made sense, if you stood back and you looked at the whole picture, there was no there there, and yet in both cases, Although the government thankfully dropped them before the cases went to trial, both these people were arrested in handcuffs. Professor Xi was arrested in front of his entire family. They had a dozen armed agents come into his house, arrested him uh, at gunpoint in front of his wife and two uh, 
daughters. Uh, Professor uh, Sherry Chen was arrested at work uh, under fairly dramatic circumstances that were quite similar, dragged out in front of her uh, co-workers. So this is very traumatic experiences. Yes, it's almost like a perp walk scenario. Exactly. You know, exactly. They parade people in front of uh, in front of the cameras. In Professor Xi's case, and, and and this is very interesting, and you did a good legal job here because he was accused of something, sharing this a sense of semiconductor information on a pocket heater. And you, uh, the scientific community, really rallied round him, and even the co-inventor of this thing said, "Oh, by the way, the diagrams you have in front of you aren't of this at all, and they're very benign." Uh, that must have helped him a lot, but that also you had to get over the suspicions of the FBI, I presume. It was an enormous help, the fact that we could present these world-renowned physicists with their affidavits saying, we've looked at the allegations, we've looked at the information that, that he purportedly shared, and these are not the same thing. He didn't share anything that was covered by a confidentiality agreement. And uh, as a result, we went to the government and we said, look, Talk to your own experts. Go find whoever you want to talk to. Any reputable scientist we are convinced will agree that uh, Professor Xi did nothing inappropriate. And thankfully, they did take a look at that. And now he's been reinstated, which yes, is great has. news. Sherry Chen has not. National Correct. Weather Service, uh, if you read anything about this woman, she was totally impassioned with her job. Anything to do with weather or water, she was on it. We saw how emotional she is. Are you going to get her a job back? We hope so. Uh, I can't imagine why they wouldn't. Um, uh, we made a presentation. We've made it a written presentation, oral presentation. Um, they said it was going to be weeks. It's been six months. We've heard nothing. So, um, you know, we have our fingers crossed, and uh, we're hoping she'll get reinstated. Right now, she is being paid. She's sitting home, not doing her job. Um, she would much prefer to be working. Let's listen to Sherry Chen because she seems to be about her hopes of going back to work soon. I thought I was going to be hired back uh, uh, immediately, but uh, six months later, they sent me a letter called a proposed uh, disciplinary action, and they they were trying to terminate my federal employment. I don't know, I don't understand why they are still using the same charge that has been dropped. Frank, right, well, in Los Angeles, this must be heartbreaking for people who, first of all, their professional reputation is dragged through the mud, maligned with charges that turn out to be false, and then not reinstated uh, in their jobs. What do you think has been going on with these two cases? It's a pattern. This, uh, it would be one thing if there was just one case, an isolated case. But you've got these two cases, you've got more prosecutions, you have the Wen Ho Lee case mm. from about 15 years ago, you have the internment of Japanese Americans. So many Asian Americans are accustomed to the go back to where you came from uh, statement being shouted at them by someone who's angry, just a stranger in a parking lot fighting for the same space, that sort of thing. So if it were just one, well, you could say, well, everyone makes mistakes, the government made a mistake. But this looks like targeting, and it looks like a pattern. There are real cases. There is real espionage. We should be concerned about that. But ruining people's lives, where they lose their job, their dignity, their freedom, their respect, and then at the end, the crazy thing about these cases is the government comes in and says, oops, we don't actually have a case. That should be an embarrassment, and somebody ought to be doing something about this. Do you think, Peter, that uh, Asian Americans have targeted on their back because of the headlines that we've been seeing about cyber espionage between the U.S. and China? Um, do you think it, in a way, is a bit like after 9-11 with terrorism and Lisbon? Uh, I'm afraid it does. It's very similar. Um, it's, it's a question of profiling. Um, it doesn't mean, um, as I said earlier, that they, there shouldn't be appropriate investigations, but... The government has to do their due diligence and not get ahead of themselves and understand that they can cause a great deal of harm um, by overreacting. And I think that's exactly what's happened here. There's been an overreaction. Frank, what does the Asian American community, Chinese American community do about this? How do they forearm themselves? We appeal to American principles and ideals. We have, or I thought we had, a fragile consensus. 
it's wrong to stereotype on the basis of race, ethnicity, ancestry, blood. We don't go up to someone and say, hey, you're black. That means you're more likely to be a criminal. That is wrong. That's illegal. It's immoral. If people stood up and said that, regardless of who they were, they would be condemned. Yet when it comes to people of Asian and now Chinese descent, there are demagogues who openly say, well, China's a threat. You're of Chinese descent. Never mind if uh, you've naturalized. Never mind if you're native born. Never mind if you speak English without an accent. Uh, if you're a Christian, if you're assimilated, you're still suspect. We're perpetual foreigners whose hearts, it seems, according to some, belong elsewhere. We aren't real Americans. That's the theme here. So what do we do? We say, we are Americans, just like you. And we believe in the same Constitution, the same Bill of Rights, and that means equal protection and due process. Frank and Peter, I want to ask you both this question. Do you think in both these cases and others like it that Asian Americans' success in STEM, science, technology, uh, engineering and math, in, somehow used against them, Peter? Well, it, it does in the sense that it puts them in a position um, with these highly uh, significant uh, disciplines, so pharmaceuticals, um, uh, cutting-edge technology that can be dual use. Um, you know, if, if you're if you're not good in math and science, you're not working in those fields. Exactly. And and there is such a uh, dominance by Chinese Americans, um, Asian Americans, um, but Chinese Americans in particular in these hard sciences in, in America, which. Let's face it, it's a tremendous asset. These people are incredibly talented, incredibly accomplished. Um, but they are in a position where, from the government's, our government's standpoint, they have access to uh, information which the rest of us who aren't uh, nearly, <laughs> aren't, certainly aren't as accomplished in, in those fields would, would ever be anywhere uh, in, in the same neighborhood of. Frank, do you agree with that? Absolutely. So Asian immigrants, Asian Americans, we're playing for the American team, but we can't get others uh, to understand that. They're suspicious. Well, maybe you're not really on this side. This is a theme. It goes all the way back to the Chinese Exclusion Act. You know, the arguments to keep Chinese and then all Asians out were not because, were not because they were thought to be inferior. The argument was they're going to take over. They're too good. They work too hard. We see that now. So your question, is the success part of the threat? Absolutely. There's a fear. It used to be a fear of Japan, Inc. Now it's a fear of China ascending. Frank Wu in Los Angeles, thank you very much. Peter Seidenberg, also thank you very much. Keep us uh, up to date on Sherry. Frustration. I think the so-called mainstream society discriminates against minorities. This verdict is unfair. I think he's being scapegoated. No fair. I don't know what, what's happened with the court, okay? It's an injustice. It's definitely an injustice. Justice! Supporters hope their voices will be loud enough to make a difference ahead of Peter Liang's sentencing on April 14th. He faces up to 15 years in prison. While there has been widespread support for Peter Young, this controversy has also divided the Asian... York jury this month convicted 28-year-old Peter Young of second-degree manslaughter after his gun went off in the stairwell of this Brooklyn housing project in 2014, killing 28-year-old Akai Gurley. The deadly shooting came in the months following the much-publicized deaths of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, and Eric Garner in Staten Island, killed by white police officers who never faced trial, prompting nationwide Black Lives Matter protests. Hands up, don't shoot! Hands up, don't shoot! Hey, don't Amid public pressure, Young the first New York police officer to be convicted in a line-of-duty shooting in over a decade drawing outrage that this was an accident and that he's being used as a scapegoat because he's Asian. Asian Americans suffer from a couple of different stereotypes. Perpetual foreigner syndrome basically says that, you know, we're Asian Americans. We're not real Americans. We're foreigners, potential spies for other, country, other countries. And, and so we shouldn't be treated the same way. We don't necessarily deserve equal justice under the system. In New York's 
Chinatown residents were quick to voice their fear. Ling Chang has this report from New York. What do you want? When do you want it? This weekend, across more than 30 U.S. cities, Tens of thousands of Asian Americans, mostly ethnic Chinese, poured into public squares and plazas from New York City to Los Angeles to rally around former police officer Peter Liang. We're here to let people know that the death of a car girl is a tragedy, but this tragedy has been compounded by the injustice to Peter Liang. A New York Chinese American scientists are trying to put their lives back together after being arrested in the United States on suspicion of spying for China. Charges against both were later dropped with little explanation. We'll talk more about their story later in the show, but we begin with the case of Chinese American police officer Peter Liang. A New York City policeman was recently found guilty of manslaughter in the 2014 shooting to death of an unarmed black man. Thousands of Chinese Americans took to the streets in cities across America last weekend to protest Liang's conviction. CCTV correspondent Lee.